Hello everyone, this is Marie from Scala Development again, and I am doing a video today to show you how to make really cool little pictures with one of my Etsy kits. This one is called the uh, Miniature Classical Art Gallery Set 1. There's only set one on the site. I haven't gotten around to making a set two, but you know, I figured it probably would eventually, so why not go ahead and remember it like that. Anyways, these are um, some different artwork pieces and things, and the kit is designed so that you can make your own artwork to hang in your dollhouse. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a second after I show you the kit. So this is the kit here. You have some different pictures and there's lots of different sizes, little small ones for portraits, very large ones. This hangs in the dining room of my dollhouse. And of course it's Scottish because you, know, you have to have something Scottish in there because that's just me. But uh, same here. Have some more kind of medium sized ones. We have some really large ones. And then it also comes with a sheet with some frames. So the frames are designed to work with the paintings. So say this frame, for example, will fit these ones. I've sized them so that all of these paintings will fit in at least one, if not more of these, or you can end up kind of cropping it down if you want to do, say, this frame and just have her in the center. Do whatever you want with it. You can scale these up and down however you need them as well to fit your needs. But um, they're designed so that if you don't have any like resin frames or plastic frames or, or things designed for dollhouses, you can kind of make your own. And what I do with the frames is you know, I put them on chipboard and I'll, I'll kind of layer them up so that you've got multiple layers. So, so I've got one layer here and then it kind of progressively goes in based on the design of the frame itself. And uh, that way it looks a little more 3D because you want it to be fairly thick when it hangs on your wall, otherwise it's going to look like you have a picture with a picture on your wall and you really want to have a picture. So you can use it with or without the frames. The frames are just kind of extras if, like me, you don't have. I don't have any dollhouse frames. Uh, I wish I did because that would be kind of cool, but I didn't, so that's what I did for that instead. So with this, I print these onto cardstock. Um, I like to have it a little bit thicker because you're going to be doing a lot of stuff to it, and I'll talk about that here in a second, but um, the cardstock is going to add a little bit of thickness, and with this sort of stuff, again, you're going for dimension, so you want all the thickness you can get. So one of the things that I do with it is I print them out, and then I put it on chipboard here. Okay, so this is a medium weight chipboard. It's about 1 32nd of an inch thick. Um, I get it in 12 by 12 sheets on Amazon, Joann's, whatever. Um, the ones I use are a company called Graphics, but there's plenty of people who make this stuff. And whenever you get art supplies or things in the mail, keep an eye out for this because medium white chipboard is also used on the back of sketch pads. It's used for um, padding and some of the stuff that they ship you to kind of keep stuff protected. I squirrel all of that away and I reuse it for this kind of thing. So this, I put the sheets printed out on the cardstock and I just glue it down. Usually I use a PVA glue for that, so probably, where do I put my, there's my glue, there you are. So it's going to be like, I use the Scotch tacky glue, you can use Lean's tacky glue, you can use a glitter glue, whatever the heck kind of glue you want. Um, I put it in a little small bottle and then I put it on the back and then I put it on here. Or you can use Mod Podge, works really good. Um, if you want to make sure you don't have a lot of bubbles and wrinkles with it though, do a thin layer, and you got to work quick if you're going to do this whole page, but do a thin layer of Mod Podge onto your substrate, thin layer on the back of this, and then stick them together, and it tends not to bubble up as much on you. But once you have these on here, uh, there's a technique that I like to use with them to try to give them that sort of painting texture. So if you look at a real oil painting, it's not flat, right? Or flat with Mod Podge, which is shiny flat, whatever you want to call that. It has some kind of brush strokes to it. So if we look at this one, for example, you can kind of see, see the little kind of brush strokey texture. Of course, the frame has a little bit of texture accidentally too, but yeah, you can kind of see that in there. Um, I'll grab one of my, got just a plain one here. So you've got this. You can kind of see the sort of brush stroke texture to it. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. So that is done using. Um, some stuff called matte medium. So this is the one I use. I use the Liquitex matte gel. Matte gel medium is used by mixed media artists for 
everything. It's great for, as an adhesive, you can actually use your, your matte medium down on here to use as an adhesive to stick these as well as you want, and it'll work just fine. Um, I'll show you an example. I do mixed media as well. I don't think I'll be doing any tutorials on the channel. But, you know, there's people who do it way, way better than I do, but this is, uh, since it's Christmas time, I figured I'd show you a Christmas one. So I use that same matte medium to add some of the texture on top of here. It's a great adhesive, like I said, so it'll, it'll hold this stuff on here. And, you know, I made some of the texture to put the rust texture on top of it. You know, so it's really versatile. But the cool thing is, again, it dries clear. So if you take this and you put a blob of it right here and you let it dry, it's going to dry as a clear blob and then you can paint over it sort of thing. What's well, great for leaving brush strokes and things, even though I did not paint this. If I did, it would be a very uh, lovely stick figure of Cleopatra that you would never know was her because, well, I'd be a stick figure because I can't paint. But it gives you those nice brush strokes in there. So you're going to attach this down to here, and then you would take your matte gel medium and put it over the top and let it dry. And we're going to do an example of that, and I thought just for fun, because I haven't tried this yet. So I'm going to try it now. So if you're seeing this part of it where I'm talking about doing this versus me sticking it down with regular cardstock, that means it worked really nice. So I have printed this instead on printable canvas. It's the same stuff that I used for the carpets. It's this Koala inkjet cotton canvas. I get it on Amazon. I get everything on Amazon. You know, seriously, I have Amazon Prime. It's like crap. You get stuff in like 30 minutes, you know. You didn't even know you were going to order it, and it shows up at your door somehow. But it's this here. So it goes through your inkjet printer. So on the one side, you can see the, the fibers of the canvas material. On the other side, it's got a bright white flatter surface. It's because this has been gesso. So again, if I were going to make a real oil painting, which I wouldn't because it would be just an unmitigated disaster, I promise you. I, I thought water coloring would be easy once, and then I learned how to make brown because, yeah, it's all the colors mixed together, and I didn't know you were supposed to wait for stuff to dry, and yeah, so was, I'm not a painter, not at all. But this is this is how you would prep a surface for doing an actual oil painting, acrylic painting, anything like that. Put gesso on there, and it, it evens your surface out, gives you a nice starting color, so it's, your color values are all even all the way across. It adds tooth and texture so that your paint can grab onto something. Um, so that's what they do with this. So basically what I kind of did when I printed this is I, I made a painting onto a canvas, except instead of paint, I used, you know, toner from a laser printer. No, this was an inkjet printer. Yeah, this stuff in laser printers does not get along well at all. It's, it's bad. Um, but the inkjet printer, you know, so it painted it, whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the texture stuff on here. And... See how that works. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do, I'm just going to do one of them because that way I can do kind of a larger one. All the, the larger ones that I have that are larger than this, of course, are stuck to the wall of my dollhouse. So I, I tried to see if I had one. I tried to use the museum wax. It's like the tacky wax and you put it on the back and you can stick stuff sort of temporarily. You don't want to commit to actually sticking things permanently to the wall of your dollhouse. Unfortunately, it's not that great because it's, I, I live in the south, so it's a bit warm here. And yeah, when that stuff gets a little bit warm, all the paintings go sliding right off the wall. So I got tired of that, so I just stuck them down. But as a result, I can't bring them here to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this one here. And we're going to put the stuff on there. And then we'll uh, leave it to dry, and I'll come back, and we'll, we'll keep progressing through the rest of it. So what you're going to start out with, you got your matte gel. I'm open this up and see it's got kind of this I, I really need to get some more um, kind of you know weird textures could real thick looks like library paste or something um, and you're just gonna put it on with a brush so I've got two brushes here it really doesn't matter which brush you use pro tip though if you're working with matte gel once you're done, either get it in water right away or clean it right away. Otherwise, it will become one with your paintbrush, and you might as well either chuck that out or make that an element in the mixed media. Whatever you want to do. So, since this is a large painting, yes, we're going to want smaller brush strokes, um, but I don't want to sit here and put the initial application on with this because we'll be here all day. So, you just take your paintbrush, 
underneath. See how it's nice and thick? I'm going to just start spreading it all over it. So it is going to be all over the place. You put it on there nice and thick and nice and well. Because again, what you're wanting is that texture. You want this to look like it's a real painting, right? So the thicker you put it on, the better. I well, don't go crazy, but <clears throat> and again, it's it's white on here right now, but it will dry clear. I'll just put a big old blob. Why not? Just kind of spread that around. And these brushes, I don't use like my nice brushes um, for this kind of application. I'm going to use you know my dollar store style cheap old ish brushes or you know Michael's variety pack or whatever. But so we're getting that first layer on there, nice and thick. And it does dry you know, decently quickly. It's not super crazy, but you really don't want to to mess with it once you you've got it on there or the way you like it. You don't want to mess with it until uh, it's completely clear again and nice and dry. So we're gonna put this on here. We'll see how this works with this canvas because yeah, again, oil paintings, real ones are done on canvas. So when you see them, part of that texture that you're seeing in them is the texture from the canvas underneath and addition to all the brush strokes and things. So, okay, so there we go. So we got this first initial layer on here. So I'll put that in some water. Now we're gonna put the top on this because this will dry out. And it's not the cheapest thing in the world. So I always buy it on coupon. So then what I do is I kind of look at the painting itself and I start looking for the lines within the paintings, you know. So like if I were painting this, it, well, it would look like crap. But if I were, say, the artist painting it, which, you know, where would my brush strokes have been kind of thing? To just sort of give it that little more believable um, texture look to it, you know. So can do that. And make sure you get all of it. So just kind of move it around. I mean, you don't have to go too crazy with it. Okay. So let's see. A little bit more like that. Yeah, that's good enough. Good enough for government work. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to let this dry. And then I will come back to you for the rest of it. Okay. And we are just checking in with it. It's probably about halfway through the drying process. As you can see, see how like crazy warped that is? it will flatten out. Uh, it's just that the liquid content of this stuff here is interacting with the fibers and everything. So as it's drying, it'll flatten back out. But uh, we'll check back again here in a few minutes when it's dry. So we're back and this is completely dry now. And it did retain a little bit of that warping. So um, we're going to try a couple things. This I should be able to glue this down so it's straight. If not, I have another idea and we'll try a different one. Well, so now that this is dry, we're going to cut this out. My apologies, but I live next to an airport, so apparently they've decided they're going to fly something that I don't buy. That's why not. Okay, so we have that one here. And then have another one of these here. Hopefully I cut that on camera. I highly doubt it. <laughs> Thinking about it. Sorry. Okay. So this guy out here too. He's over to the side. All right. So when we go to do our picture, um, we want to trim this up a bit and we're going to mount this to something else so that it, it has something to then mount to the wall in the dollhouse with. So we're going to use that medium weight chipboard. And we'll glue this down. So a piece of it here. Boom. Okay, and we're going to glue this down nice and flat in the theory. Since it's dry now, what we can do is we can weigh it down as well. So let's see. The best thing to use. Let's use my poor little stamp block that desperately needs to be clean. And then I'll use my one, two, three blocks on that. Okay, so we have this guy here. We're going to take our fabric fix. Um, another tip for you with this stuff, as you get down towards the end of the bottle, it gets really thick. You can thin it out with nail polish remover. Just make sure, number one, it has to be 100% acetone. If it's like that gentle nail polish remover, it, it won't work. But since the liquid base of this is acetone, you can put just a little bit, it, it doesn't take much, and just kind of swirl it around in there. 
on until it sort of loosens up for you, but that's in the other room, so I'm just going to go with it like this. Okay, so I'm going to put a nice bit of glue on here, and the edges, put plenty of it in the center to hold this down. Um, you know, usually with fabrics and things, you have to be careful because your glue will go to the other side. The glue ain't getting to the other side on this one. Okay, so we're going to put you down here. Oop. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use my jewelry bench block. Oh, this bad boy is heavy. Okay, so we're going to put that off to the side. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this one and we're going to glue it down before putting anything on it. So I have a suspicion that it's going to stay kind of um, warped like that a bit. I mean, it'll, it'll still, we can still make it work, but um, I kind of want to see how it works if you glue it down first, which I kind of thought I probably should have done, but I didn't do because, you know, reasons. Okay, and this stuff grabs really quick. Uh, it holds really well. I'll press that down. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the other one. We're going to take our matte medium and our brush that we've left in the other probably way too long. Okay. Um, our little brush. And we're going to do the same kind of thing that we did with this one. So again, get a nice generous coating of the matte medium on there. I smooth it out. I tend to go over the edges because I'm going to trim down to just a little small border over the edges and then the frame will cover that up. But it's better than having a little tiny gap where you don't have any of the the matte medium and it, it kind of throws it off because you know that's the of course the part that will draw your eye for sure. Other people may not notice, but you'll tell them notice. And we'll drive you nuts. You really need to get some more matte medium. All right. Oh, we got it all over here. A bit thicker here. Okay, so now just like last time, we're going to take the smaller brush and we're just going to kind of go over areas to sort of make it look like, oh yeah, I totally painted this. So it kind of matches the picture underneath, which sometimes it gets a little difficult to see because, you know, the stuff is on top of it. You can sort of see it, but... All right, I think that should be good. Okay. So we're going to set this one off to dry over here. And it's a bummer because, yes, yeah, since it's, you know, obviously not medium, it's wet. You can't really put anything heavy on top of it to keep it flat. So um, I'm going to get some stuff ready to work on the frames. And we're going to let this dry. And then I will be back. Okay. So what I have done here is I have taken the sheet that had the uh, pictures of the frames on it. And I have printed it off a couple times because I want to do a few different layers on each frame. And then I have my favorite medium white chipboard here. And so I'm going to glue these down. Um, again, I'm just using regular PVA glue for this. And of course, oh, I hate when it does that. Get you off of there. Okay. Every time. Never fails. All right. So you don't have to be too terribly crazy with it because we're going to be gluing layers of it on top of layers of it. There's going to be Mod Podge involved. It'll be just fine. But we just want to stick it down here so that we can cut it out. So on this one, for example, say we use this one here. I'm going to do three layers. I'm going to do one where I cut it out in the opening at the normal spot. One about here and then one about here so I can stack them up to get that kind of um, 3D effect with it. So all you do is you cut your chipboard roughly. Because you really don't have a choice but to put it roughly. It's not very scissor friendly. You know? Alright. Here we go. I'll do one of these ones. So cut one of these out here with this. And I do it where I had put the smaller frames in the center to kind of save space. But since we're cutting this out, we might as well cut the small one out too. That doesn't make any sense not to. So I'm going to grab my scissors again, like I, I said in the other video. These have a micro serration. You will really, really see it on chipboard. Um, so you want to make sure the logo is facing away from the image side. So as we cut this out, you can do the whole thing with a craft knife if you like. I just prefer to do this part with scissors because it's just 
a little bit easier. And when you're working on little short runs of the, the chipboard, it's not too bad. It doesn't really bite you too hard. That being said, you know, I can't really get straight either, but I'm going to go around the edges of this. Apparently my coffee hasn't kicked in yet. Okay. edges. And again, you're going to have three layers. This is going to be the bottom layer here. And we're going to do a bunch of cool stuff to it. But first we have to do a rough cut on the outside. Okay, so there's that part there. It's fairly even-ish. Um, if you don't get it even, sandpaper is your best friend with that. So, craft knife. And on this one, we're just going to go in that center opening. You will not cut all the way through it on your first shot, so don't try because if you press really, really hard on it, you're going to have a much higher chance of, you know, swerving around or having it go weird on you. You can use a, a ruler to help you if you like. I generally don't because I'm going to make a bigger bollocks of it. I've got the ruler because it's going to slip or the ruler's going to slip or I'm going to do something dumb. And, it's always a good chance of me doing something down. So I've got five times. Save the corners kind of for last. So we can get those dialed in nice and sharp. So this is going to be our bottom layer of our frame. Let's see how it's just fighting me. <laughs> it loves to slip around, but if you've already got that groove in there that you did on the first pass, then again, you're less likely to slip and whoosh, all across it. Having said that, I'll probably do exactly that. That's just how it works. And one more side. And after you've been using the craft knife for a bit, it gets, it gets a little easier to do the, the straight lines. They're not really easy for anybody, but they just get a little easier. Okay, I think we're all the way through on that. And this glass cutting mat makes it easier, so you can kind of see. We need to work on our corners. So I just kind of go to the corner and make sure it's cut nice and good, straight into that corner on this side. I flip it around this way because whichever side was your bottom side that you were cutting towards is going to be the one you got into the corner the least, you know. So it'll take a little bit of work, but just be patient with it until you get all the way through. I'm going to do the same over here. On the top. And we'll flip it around and do that on this side. So that's not too bad. Okay, let's see how well we're breaking out of there. It's just kind of a matter of cut a little bit and try to wiggle it, and cut a little bit and try to wiggle it. The corners take a minute. But you don't want to be impatient and, and kind of pull at them because then it's not going not gonna to look very good because you'll have a piece of it torn off and hanging off and nobody likes that. So there we go. And then with this you can just slip around to the back and just kind of help it out a little bit. Okay, so there we have our first frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut the other frames, at least definitely around, um, so you don't have to sit through and watch all that boring business. And yeah, I'll come back to show you how we're going to put them together. Okay, so I'm back, and as you can see, I've got all three of them cut out now. So they're cut with different sizes of openings, so that when we stack them, and this one is printed out slightly smaller. I don't know what happened to that. That's bizarre, but it's okay, because it's going to be in the center, so you won't see it. So once we do that, we can now stack them up. See how they're going to be kind of stair-step, you know, obviously straighter than that when put them together. So our first step is going to be to take our Mod Podge, and I use the one with the antique in it. 
Oh, Matt, you can use glossy if you want. There we go. So I'm going to have a little bit of that. Okay. Put the Mod Podge in. I'm going to put the Mod Podge on the frames. Because what that's going to do is that's going to seal the paper. And make sure you get your edges so that way, you know, if you didn't do the best job in the world of bring it down, at least it'll keep it nice and stuck on there. Okay, we're going to be layering these, so we have plenty, and I just realized I'm probably nowhere near the camera, because where I can see is way over here, but, you know, who can see is over there, so. All right. Go. I'm going to punch these. Yeah, the, the antique in this one gives it kind of a cool... Um, it's not super noticeable, but it's it's a little noticeable. It gives it a little bit of an antique tint to it. And we are going to these. I set these up here so they can dry. And while they're drying, we're going to take a look at our pictures that we did. Let's see how those are doing. So it doesn't have to be you know super careful because you're basically you're putting a protective coat on it. It's easier to do it when they're separate because once you put them together, of course, they're going to be kind of stair-stepped and so the glue tends to like to hang up in the, the gaps and, and ridges and stuff where they meet and, and you have to fiddle with them. All right, so there's those. I'm going to put the top on this. And we will check out these. Okay, so the one here that we put the um, jewelry bench block on and the stamp thing on. See, it's it's laid down kind of flat, more or less. There's still a little bit of warping to it, but now we can see the texture of it. See how you've got the brush? It looks like brush strokes on there, plus you have the canvas. Um, and then this is the one where we glued it down first, and there's a lot less warping, which is what I thought. I knew I should have done it that way from the beginning, but it's okay. It's a learning process, you know. With these sorts of things, I don't I don't worry about whether they're going to work. I just try them, and if they work, cool. And if they don't work, big deal. It's just paper. It's just canvas fabric. So we're going to go ahead and use this one since it has the least warping, and I didn't cut the other frame out. So just like with everything, we're going to cut this out with our scissors. And on here, you're going to want to leave a little bit of a gap of the white just so you make sure you have um, enough area to glue on when we glue it in the frames. Come on, get out there. Make it a little less unwieldy. Now, if you were really dedicated, you could, you know, make a little square and stretch this canvas over it. I am not that dedicated. See, I can't even do a straight line, so. You have a stretching canvas? Yeah, that ain't happening. All right, come on. Do you work with me here? There we go. And yes, kids, even scissors can be dangerous in the wrong hands, which would be, you know, my... Okay. Um, there we go. I promise you I cut much better when I'm not on camera than I do. And I, I noticed that you know most of my crafting life is spent moving my scissors from one side of the desk to the other side of the desk. And to the other side of the desk. Okay, so this is gonna be our picture. And this is still a little wet, but see it's gonna sit right in there like that. So on these ones here you'll notice that the frames are quite a bit darker than what these have printed out. That's not, miraculously for me, a printing or toner issue. It's because I tinted them. I wanted them a little bit darker to fit in with the, the color scheme of the house. So what I did is I did the Mod Podge because again, it's gonna protect your paper on your frame and it's gonna protect it from any kind of painting or aging. So I aged this using this right here. So this is, um, so Art Alchemy Finnebear Liquid Acrylic in Burnt Sienna. It's a nice brown color. Um, liquid acrylics are great, or fluid acrylics, if you want to get those as well. They do the same thing because they're, they're transparent-ish. They're not super transparent, but they're transparent enough where I could go over it with this, and it, it'll tint that but not obscure everything under it. You can also use um, some of the gel stains 
and things, they'll, they'll work on this too. They'll kind of sit on top of it, but experiment with it first because it just really depends on the stain and how well it uh, feels like playing with everything. So since these frames are a little too tacky still, I'm going to do the whole magic of uh, YouTube thing and come back here in a few minutes when they are good to go. All right, so these are probably dry enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to stack these together. So we're, you're going to use your frame that you kept all of it intact, obviously, as your bottom because you want to build it out from the center. So we're going to take the next one up, which is this one here. And you can just use tacky glue. You can use, you know what, let's use the fabrics. I just tend to trust the fabrics a little bit more for holding stuff down. Not that the tacky glue doesn't. It totally does, but... Oh, see how this does this thing where it's just like, hey, I'm just going to leave glue out. That's how you know with Fabrifix and Fabri-Tac that it's getting a little thick because some of it will get trapped up in the top. And the fumes from the acetone base in there kind of evaporating up will press it up through the top and it does this volcano thing. It's super annoying. So just always put your lid back on between using it. Otherwise, that will be everywhere. All right, so let's take a look at this. Should be this way here. And then we're going to put this here. Now remember that this one, for whatever reason, printed out a little smaller. So what we want to do is we want to line up this inside because that's our next step here to make sure that's nice and square. And you do have a second with the glue to kind of move it around and press it down real good. If you get any extra, you can just use your fingernail, you can use a toothpick, um, and what have you. And so we're going to take this third piece, this is going to be our little outer piece, and we're going to put glue on it. Yeah, I really do need to, we do need to hit this with the nail polish stuff, for sure. Because it's a little thicker than it's supposed to be, but that happens when you, when you get down towards the bottom. Alright, so fairly thin bead of glue, because we don't want glue just oozing all over the place. So you have to clean it up. So let's put this on here. And so now we're going to line up this part here so that we've got that part square and then this part square and that makes the outside. And sort of sandwiching those down. The nice thing with the uh, Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac, any of the acetone base glues, you can just kind of keep pressing it down for a minute. It's gonna, it's gonna grab on there real good. If you're using a PVA glue, like tacky glue or something like that, you may want to um, use clamps to clamp these down because, again, that, that type of glue is going to tend to make it warp because it's water-based. And everything that you're putting together is paper, so it's going to want to kind of move around. Okay, so now we have our 3D frame. So now, had this not printed weird, I would then sand the edges just to get them nice and even. So this, this would be a great candidate for a wall on the back of the dollhouse where you're not going to see the side. <laughs> so and as we can see, we'll put this on top of here. So it's going to look really cool. All right, so what we can do for tinting it, we grab just a scrap of whatever because I hate having to clean up my um, palette. Now, since we have put the Mod Podge on there, the paper is sealed. If you try to do this without putting Mod Podge on there first, the paper is very porous. So it's going to take all that pigment and it's going to soak right in and you're not going to be able to move the paper around like you want to. Um, acrylics are water-based, so if you want, you can thin them with water. And if you get too heavy of a bit on there, you can grab some water and kind of move it around too. Um, with the liquid acrylics, a little bit goes a very long way as you can see. So we'll just kind of go over this and get this tinted up just a little bit. See it hardly takes anything to give it that kind of, you know, almost like it's been stained um, appearance. And you can keep doing this as many times as you like to get the color range that you like to. If you like the dark wood look, if you like the lighter wood look, you know, however you want it. And get the inside edges of it so it doesn't look quite like cardboard, which is always nice. Don't want that. 
and see on those edges, it's going to soak in really quickly because we haven't really protected them as much as we did the paper. Okay. And then, of course, once it dries, then it's, it's permanent, but you have some wiggle room with it. So like here where that corner got a little too dark for me, I'm just going to get a little water on there and just kind of go over it a bit and see how it evens it out because it's water-based. So, I mean, you, again, you do have your limits with it, but I'm going to go ahead and do the sides. And that'll make that unevenness a little less noticeable. Not much, but a little. I took a little too much off of that part there. So you can keep going over and over until you get it you know, to where you want it. Um, and then afterwards, if you want to hit it with another layer of Mod Podge, you can. That'll, you know, of course, protect it even more. Um, if you want it to have kind of a gloss, you can use that. Um, Sculpey makes this really cool gloss glaze, but I have not been able to find it lately. So they probably figured out that I really like it. And so they're like, get that off the market instantly because she's going to buy another bottle of it, which happens to me with all kinds of things. Okay, so there we go. And then kind of touch that little spot up in there where you missed. And, and with this kind of stuff, just kind of hold it to the light um, and move it around. Just like you would like with mixed media and, and things. You always want to kind of move it around so you can see spots that you missed. Because if you're just looking in one angle, you know, you didn't see it in that angle when you went to paint it, which you're going to see it now. So. Move this around, make sure we got all the inside, looks good. Okay, so there we go. So we'll let that dry, that dries pretty quickly. Um, I usually like to do two coats because as you can see the, the first coat tends to be fairly rough on there and you're seeing brush strokes and things. And so I'll give it a minute and then I'll do like a second bit. Be sitting down a little bit of water. And then the nice thing with my little cardboard thing here is super easy cleanup. I just gotta throw it away. Uh, a little bit more on there. And I've gone like way dark. I don't really look like this dark on it, but uh, it's gone fairly dark. Okay, so there we go. So there's our frame. Um, you can then, if you like, take use this gilding wax here. You can go around the edges, or you can go around the center um, with it. I mean, there's so many things you can do with it. You can also, if you don't feel like doing the frames, because they can get a bit fussy, and again, you know, making them in layers is very optional, but you can also use wood scraps. So you can either take, like I have strip wood here, so I've got this strip wood, and I can add another piece here, and you know, build it up to make it its own frame kind of thing, or, if, like me, you've got extra trim left over from making the dollhouse, this makes a great frame. So you would just measure it, and then you would miter the edges here and, and make a frame out of your leftovers. So there's lots of different ways to do that, but I was on Amazon earlier today. and I was looking for trim. I have another dollhouse kit that I'm going to do. And that trim is so expensive, my God. But... um you know, these different companies had all kinds of other stuff that they were offering. And yeah, a picture like this in a frame is going for like $5. So why, why not make it yourself? It's, it's super easy to do. Um, like I said, you can use the kit. As with everything else, you don't have to use the kit. You can always go online and find a painting that you, if you have a painting you really, really like and you want in your dollhouse, find a good high resolution image of it and pull it in, print it off and, and do this exact same thing with it find a frame, get it to match, print it off, and, and you're good to go. So it's, it's really more the technique of doing the little um, multi-level frames and things. And then when you're done with that, I would just take this and then I would glue this onto the back here. So it's in its frame like these. So you see these are like that on the back. Okay, and then you can, you can hang it from the wall and you have a nice little art gallery thing you can do. I like the, the spooky portraits. Um, I didn't put those in the kit because they're, they're newer artwork and that's, you know, the stuff that I normally use is Victorian and it's free use. It's long out of any kind of copyright type thing. 
Um, but these are fairly newer where people have, have taken old Victorian portraits and then made them creepy like with a skull for the face or whatever. So I have a great little portrait gallery on the way up to the stairs. Um, I'll see if I can find a way to enter a picture of it in here. But yeah, it's you can have a lot of fun with this. And again, if, if you don't have <clears throat> the dollhouse frames, it, you can make your own with, with a little bit of patience and, and whatnot. You know, this method works perfect for that. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, the kit is being cut up slightly, but it's the Classical Art Gallery. It's available on Etsy, and I will have a link on for you. It's got the different pictures that you can use, or you know, go out and, and do it up your own. Have fun with it. You can do whatever you like. So I uh, hope you all have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.